one, how humble you feel like being. You're the orchestrator of the 12-team college mm. football playoff. You also run a major university, mm. and you're looking for an athletic director. Seems like you're kind of a busy guy <laughs> lately. Dr. Mark Keenum with us right now. Well, thank you, Michael. It, it is a busy time, and uh, you give me way too much credit on the first uh, <laughs> issue you pointed out to about college football. Uh, yes, yeah, busy time. It's an exciting time uh, here at Mississippi State. And we're proud to have the two of you and have this program here in downtown, beautiful Starkville. And I love all the Christmas decorations that are up yeah. downtown. It makes me feel all festive and in the holiday spirit. So uh, yeah, it's a good. Good things are happening, at Mississippi State. We're lucky you're giving us a lot of time today. So I want to start with the playoff, if if that's okay. How when you're talking to people in a similar position to yours about changing how college football determines its champion. How difficult are those conversations to get everybody on the same page? Uh, well, you, well, there's a, there's a real strong desire, I think, uh, to change what we're doing. Now, I'm going to just tell you, the Southeastern Conference, well, we've been pretty good in the college football playoff current format mm -hmm. you know just look at last year you know we had the two finalists and it's twice that we've done that and so we have a very good track record of performing and doing very well and having an sec representative playing for the national championship but i also recognize that um let's just be let's just lay it out there schools like mississippi state university you know, I go back several years ago when Dak Prescott was here and we had a really great season his junior year. And, you know, a trivia question is that the very first school ranked by the CFP format to be number one in the nation was Mississippi State University. And we had that ranking for five weeks. And so we were very competitive. Ended the season ranked number seven in the country. And anyway, um, even that great team would not have been able to play in the current format for the national championship. And, and I recognize that being the final four, there's 131 teams in the college bowl series format. And uh, when you only have four that can compete for the championship, uh, I'd like to see more schools like Mississippi State, University of Mississippi, Southern Miss, other schools have an opportunity. So I'm a fan of expanding the playoff and have been. Uh, but there are a lot of issues involved in going from four. It sounds easy to go from four to 12. How hard can that be? Well, that's very difficult. We've said that exact phrase on this show many times. <laughs> many times. <laughs> well, trust me, I have a great whole new appreciation for all that's involved, bowl partnerships, contracts, media rights contracts, and logistics, and on and on, campuses who have to accommodate this new format and how they're able to do it. So there's a lot of moving parts. And it took us about two years, okay? Now, we had a little thing called COVID in between that interrupted some of this and caused us to be delayed in our ability to move forward. But we got it done back in early September, and, and we've got great colleagues, members of the, the Board of Managers for the college football playoff, great leaders across the country who represent our 10 conferences, and Father Jenkins uh, with Notre Dame. Great group of leaders. I have tremendous respect for them. I'm honored to be in the room with them. They're such outstanding leaders. And we, we finally came to a point where we had to make a decision one way or the other and either decide we're going to go forward. And because we saw a window, and, and the window may not be even open for us, but you know we, we need to decide by the year 2026, the 26 football season, what will the format look like? Because the current format ends after the 2025 football season. Our contract with ESPN expires. So we've got to make a decision. I think everyone in the room in our group who represent all the 10 conferences in Notre Dame agree we want to expand. We like the 12-team format. So let's go ahead and decide it because let's give ourselves a chance to possibly start this format in year 2024. And that's why we moved forward, and I was pretty insistent on that we need to make a decision, and we did, and that was monumental for college football in our future. So we know we're going to a 12-team format. We know at the, at, the, at the latest it will be 2026, but let's give our commissioners an opportunity to work out a lot of these logistics that I was discussing and try to start it earlier if we can, possibly 2024, maybe 2025 if we can't get it done in 24. But 
let's give them a chance. And so that I think that's what helped us get over the hump, over the hurdle to finally cast the votes we needed to approve the 12 team format. So I'm I'm pleased it's in the hands of the commissioners. They have been meeting, my goodness, they have been meeting and meeting and meeting and trying to work out the details. Um, they're still having more meetings. They'll be meeting as uh, this coming Monday. I'll give you some inside news. They're, they're continuing to discuss the details and I'm doing my part to continue to urge them. And Greg Sankey is a leader in this group. He's an outstanding leader for the nation in, in athletics, college football especially. And I have complete confidence and trust in his leadership as he's working with his colleagues to hopefully, hopefully come up with something sooner than 2026. But again, if it's 2026, then I said that after we voted in September, then that's okay. It's not my preference, but at least we know where we're going for the future of college football. When you talk about Greg Sankey and the SEC, you mentioned it. the SEC probably be happy to stay at four because they've done so well in that format. Why is the SEC such a leader in trying to expand a format that they've already been successful? In? Well, I think it goes back to what I said. You know, if you look at it just as a conference, and if you simply look at it from a selfish standpoint, then the SEC would never agree to go to a 12-team format. But uh, you know, but you're only limiting it to a handful of schools realistically that will have a chance to compete. I think when you broaden it, you bring more into the equation. You bring in, I think, schools like Mississippi. I'm not saying we can't be a top four team, and that's what our hope and goal is. And when I talk to Coach Leach or even anyone that we in, the, in our program, we aspire to be at that level, and we want to be at that level. But also and realist and know that we have a better chance if it's more teams able to compete. Just like I refer back to when we had Dak Prescott here in, in the great season that we had. University of Mississippi last year, for example, would have been in the playoffs. They would have hosted a playoff game uh, at Oxford on their campus and how exciting that would have been. And just like I use the, the analogy or the, the example um, of the University of Mississippi, a great example of a team that was the last team in the baseball college playoff. The last team in. And they won it all. Give young student athletes a chance. Give coaches an opportunity and let them compete. And when you get to this level uh, uh, and you look at some of the upsets we've seen in college football lately, you get in a playoff format. A lot of things can happen, and you get a lot of excitement. The fan base, I think, will be electric about their schools making it to the playoff, just like we get excited when our basketball team or our soccer team gets excited, gets invited to be in the NCAA tournament, which we hope they will. Uh, making the tournament is going to be another measure of success. And so we're talking about a, a, a national football tournament. Try to get in the tournament. And as you get into your – particularly in the second half of a regular season, every game is almost becoming a playoff game. And the fan excitement, the energy, the engagement is just over the top. It will bring a lot more energy, I think, to, to the sport and give student athletes more of an opportunity to compete for their nation's national championship. And, and so you step back as a conference and you look at it collectively, the membership and who we are, who we represent, um, that's why the SEC is willing to say, we can support this. We know, I'll just be honest, we know that we're going to have a team that's going to be in the playoff every year. We know that we'll have multiple teams in the playoff every year. More SEC schools in the playoff competing for the national championship. That's a good thing for the conference. So we don't want to try to be selfish and say, hey, let's just keep it at four. We know we're always going to have somebody in the top four. The SEC champion is going to most likely always be in the, in, the, in, the, in the mix. But let's add more SEC schools to the mix and create more, even more excitement and, and give more schools, more fan bases, and more athletes a chance to win the national championship. It's a huge opportunity. We have less than a minute before a break, and, and we appreciate your time so much. Uh, we'll talk about – uh, the other big story around here when we come back, but real quick, that sounds like a lot of work. How do you continue to run a university <laughs> while also doing all of that? Well, we have a great team at Mississippi State. I mean, a great team of leaders. And, you know, it is a lot of work. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of extra uh, involvement for me personally. Uh, I get 
stimulated by it, you know. You always look for things to do, but we've got a great team, and I'm, I'm very blessed to be a part of it. It's Dr. Mark Keenum. He will uh, stick with us. More from Dr. Mark Keenum, the president of Mississippi State University, and talked about college football playoff expansion. That's happened. That's over. Well, sort of. Anyway, we know it's happening. Don't know exactly when, but it's happening. The other thing, John Cohen leaving Mississippi State for Auburn. We're not going to ask you about candidates because I don't think you tell us anyway. Mm -hmm. But when, when you found out, however you found out, I'm curious, what is the first thing you did? So phone call, meeting, whatever, when you find out and that conversation ends, what was the first thing you did? Well, you know, it was a surprise, I'll just tell you. I was very surprised by John contacting me to let me know that he was about to talk to, well, he basically called to let me know that in case I hear anything in the media that he was was talking, he had already been, begun discussions with the, I guess, administration with, the, uh, with Auburn University, and so... Uh, my first reaction was a little bit of shock. I didn't see it coming. Uh, I thought John was very content here. I'm very content with John. I gave no indication to him. Otherwise, I can assure you of that. Uh, he's done a great job here at Mississippi State, and I'm very proud of what he's done. And, and and he's a passionate guy. I know he loves this university, and and you can tell it by all the great things he's done. So I was that caught me by surprise and uh and so obviously you know when you're caught by a surprise like that i, I was like well john well, t well tell me about this and what what's what 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 do i need to do to help you maybe not go down this path and he was at that by the time i learned about it uh, he was already his i could tell his mind was committed and and he is emotionally already connected to this opportunity so uh, uh, that's the best way i can describe it just a bit of shock and the the when on Saturday when it broke in the in the news, you know he he did assure me that he had not accepted. They made him an offer, but he had not accepted, and that he needed a little time before he makes his final decision. And I was I worked with him on that, and and so uh, but Monday morning, well we just, basically Sunday we decided we've got to make this known pretty quick, and that we were going to make an announcement on Monday. And that we were going to move forward because I couldn't wait. He hadn't made a decision, or he hadn't made the final decision or commitment by Monday. And I'm like, well, um, we're going to make a decision, and we're going to move forward because I can't hold up our athletics department. We can't put it on hold. And so, I think with that, John went ahead and resigned. He just immediately resigned before Auburn made the formal announcement. Now the media had announced things back on over the weekend, that it was a done deal. John Cohen's the next athletics director at Auburn and all this. Well, the truth is it wasn't a done, a done deal. And But by Monday morning, it was a done deal as far as Mississippi State was concerned in, in the sense that we have to move forward. And, and I take my hat off to John. He, he, he did everything the way I would have wanted him to do it, and I'm very pleased with how he how he responded and, and has agreed to move forward. But, like I said, he was great. He did a good job, but we're moving forward, and we're going to find another great leader. This won't be the first time that I've gone down this path and hired an athletics director. And In fact, uh, with uh, Bracky Brett, who we've named as the interim director for Mississippi State Athletics, who's a great leader. Uh, Bracky Brett is a Mississippi State graduate, and... With him, there are now four Mississippi State graduates who are athletics directors in the Southeastern Conference. That's true. And, uh, and I've worked with all of them, um, from Greg Byrne, who's at Alabama, and Scott Strickland at Florida, and John now at Auburn, and, and Bracky, who is a 20-plus year veteran here in our, in our athletics department. So uh, we're, we're slowly taking over the Southeastern Conference, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's going to be... It's interesting when we have our meetings and I see the directors now, it's going to be very strange when I see John in his orange and blue and, and Greg in his red and, of course, uh, Scott in his, um, I guess, orange and blue. Orange and blue as well. So it's, uh, it, I, you know, I told, I, w I went and met with the football team the other night and I told them, well, John Cohen, I'll, he's just joined the AD athletic portal, uh, transfer portal. And, um, uh, and so he's joined the athletics uh, AD transfer portal, and um, and I talk, was talking to Greg Sankey about it, and Greg said, "Well, 
He said, with all these Mississippi State graduates in the conference and with John going to Auburn, he said, you're just trying to get another vote to support keeping the cowbell. <laughs> I said, hey, that's right, you know. We'll take all the support we can get. But I, I wish John the best. He's going to do a great job at Auburn. But you know what? We're going to have a great leader here at Mississippi State. I guess we have to go back 40-plus years to find a Mississippi State athletic director who was not promoted from within Mississippi State. I mean, Larry Templeton was, and then Greg Byrne, hmm. and then Scott Strickland, and then John Cohen. It looks on the early days of this search like there will be someone brought in from outside Mississippi State. They might have previous ties, but they won't be here currently. When you go out and talk to people about Mississippi State, you know what's the reception like? Well, you know, I haven't had a chance to get out and start talking about it yet. It just happened, and uh, but we will. Uh, we're going to do the same process we we've done in the past. You know, we'll have a search consultant work with us, and it's it, that's really good at working in this space and with a national reputation. And we're going to do a national search. We've put it out. We posted the job, uh, and so. We're going to do a very, very serious. I take it very serious. I'm, I'm, I'm I love this university. I love uh, Mississippi State athletics. I've been ringing the cowbell since I was knee high, uh, so I'm number one fan, and I want the best leadership for this wonderful t- department, this wonderful program here at Mississippi State. All of our athletics programs are outstanding. Uh, we're going to find someone who understands the business of college athletics and it is a big business just on our campus alone you know our budget is around 130 million dollars and uh so uh, i need someone who understands that side of the equation i need someone who uh, can fit in our culture being a mississippi state bulldog is special i want someone who can relate well to us can relate well to our fan base can can communicate well, can be out with our fans and uh, our alumni and our students and just fit in and be part of our community. Uh, of course, I want somebody who knows how to hire a coach. Uh, one of the most important jobs that an athletics director has is hiring coaches. And and I give John credit for having, hiring, helping us bring some really outstanding coaches up and down the line here on our campus. We have great coaching staff, and uh, but that's a talent to be able to identify and recruit that kind of talent to lead our student athletes, uh, and then understand and appreciate this world of college ath- athletics that we're in today. And it's evolved just in the last, you know, two plus years. When you look at uh, quickly, too, and, and that name, image, and likeness, and and transfer portals, and and all the things that are changing the landscape for college athletics today, uh, I want somebody who understands that and can help us develop a vision and a plan for my, our university to to not just survive but to thrive and do well in this new environment. So, uh, it's a tall order. It's a tall task, and. Um, but I'm confident that this university is the quality of this institution, the quality and reputation of our programs and who we are. Uh, we're we're going to have a long list of people who want to be part of this of this university. And, and I promise you we're going to do everything in our power to bring the best possible leader to Mississippi State to lead all of our athletics programs here on our campus. Just a couple minutes left here with Dr. Mark Keenan, president of Mississippi State University. To you, in your opinion, what is the single most important factor in this hire? What what does a candidate have to have? He can't miss on this one thing if he wants to be the next athletic director at Mississippi State. Well, I think it, it's, it, I would say uh, it would encapsulate pretty much everything I said. I think I can't just say someone who's a good communicator and can get out and work well with people. It has to be someone who understands the business, who understands this environment that we're in, who who can uh, help provide leadership uh, for our program, can support our student athletes. I mean, we're student-centered, we're student-focused, we're student-athlete-focused in our athletics department. And the student athletes come first, first and foremost. So it has to be someone who can bring all of these tangibles together to again, at the end of the day, be a leader, be a proven, established leader in this environment. And uh, and I'm very confident, like I said, that we will identify and bring that person to our campus, and uh, we're going to have great days moving forward. We've had great days, and we're going to keep our momentum going forward.
We really appreciate your time this afternoon. You've been really kind with your time. I imagine you're pretty busy at the moment well, with a football I've, game, which, by the way, there's a football game. Yeah, how uh, ironic it is that it's Auburn. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. Yeah. So thank you very well, much. You, 